Hello, my name is Jay Martin. This is TW Replays. Thank you for watching. We're on Pyramids. This one was sent in by Marshall Lamb a while ago. I've been meaning to get around to this one, and uh, I failed to find something I really wanted to talk about until yesterday night. I was reading this book. It was about uh, aircraft carrier combat in World War II, and the author got around to this interesting subject that I had never seen before that I think applies a lot to how we play Napoleon. He started talking about something called Lanchester Square Law. Lanchester was uh, an Englishman in the World War I era who came up with a theory on how you can model combat between two opposing armies. It says this, I'll read it for you. Lanchester Square Law says that the superior force will inflict heavier losses on a force that has less ability to absorb those losses. And, this is the important part, the situation will only worsen as the battle grinds on. After all is over, the superior force will have won a victory that is much better than the initial relative strength. Also important. In essence, it is much more advantageous to concentrate force and defeat the enemy in detail. What he's getting at, if we're talking about aircraft carriers, if carrier A has 100 planes, carrier B has 100 planes, and they have a you know, an attack or a wave or whatever. If this carrier loses 20 planes in the first wave, this one only loses 10. Then on the second wave, now we outnumber you 90 to 80, the effects of that will start to kind of snowball. And in the end, this carrier will win a huge advantage with like 60 planes left at the end of the battle and the other carrier is sunk. We talk about this subject quite a bit in roundabout ways we use different terms right we talk about snowballing um he who gets his cabin first wins we kind of talked around this issue in a lot of different ways but i thought the way that the book expressed the law had some implications on how it should inform our gameplay a good example of this is i think the game that goldie posted between himself and lendon and in that game Lendon got an initial advantage early when one cav unit pinned two infantry of Goldie's. Lendon leveraged that to kill the infantry because Golds were in square, so he had better shots. And Lendon opened the game with an advantage of now there's 19 units versus 18. And from that position, Lendon was able to close the game out and Gold could really never recover. And the, in the end, Lendon had a whole bunch of units left, which should have been a very close game. And most grassy games do come down to, you know, three units versus two or something very close like that. But in this game, we watched the snowball effect and Lyndon ran away with the game. That is the square law that I just read you about. I think this informs us about two things, two ways we should be playing. The first is that you want to be looking for that initial advantage in the opening of the game. Meaning, you want as many people shooting as possible when the game begins. So the, the classic tactic of, I'm going to hold three old guard in reserve on grassy, is just fundamentally a bad move. You want as many units shooting at the opening of the game as possible. And you want to have localized positional advantage because that's how you create the initial casualty deficits that get you snowballing. And I think the second thing it teaches us is you want to look for openings to get your cav in early. Of course, Napoleon's a very complicated game and context counts for a lot. But I think the Lanchester rule kind of pushes us in that direction. And I think that's interesting. Um, a good example of a game, I think, is this one that Lamb sent in. And in this, we have a GB player who's on the high ground and is arrayed pretty defensively. Lamb's army doesn't have a lot of breakthrough potential in this case. The GB player has lights, so they have a bit of a range advantage. You know, if, if you're Lamb, how in the heck do you start a profitable engagement in this position? I don't think you can, right? You, you can't really fight that. So what Lamb winds up trying to do here is he has to create some space on the flanks. And I think what Lamb is going to show us is a pretty good reflection of the square law in practice. And notice this, the lights are coming out to tickle him. All right, he has to respect that. We pull back. There's a little jockeying for a position. That's fine. And 
And there's this big movement. Both players have their cav way out on the flank here, which makes sense. It's kind of hard to profitably drive them through there. But this, you know, if if we if we looked at this position right now, I would be like, how in the heck is Lamb supposed to create? you know, advantage right here. This just seems like impossible if he walks straight forward and gives the first shot away. The GB troops have excellent um, accuracy and whatnot. I don't see the Ottoman army winning in this position, which means I'm kind of looking at these cav units down here and wondering how do we create a positive, um, you know, a positive engagement, one that we're comfortable with. Now, here we go. The infantry move up here. I actually really approve of this move. He he moves to engage all over the, the line there. The rally may be a little preemptive. And here comes... He's willing to take a cav fight. There's some shooter cav... That are getting positioned. This is going to force the GB player to react. And in the back... I, I love the... We're committing. So the GB player kind of predictably counter charges... Okay, it's four and four. Seems fair, I guess. Not really, but... Now, Lamb does a couple things that are interesting here. First is we have three units shooting on three, but with a Bashi that goes in. So that's exhibit A on him trying to leverage that extra unit to create some advantage. But then... A square goes up, and he starts dragging the cav through it. So it was four cav on four cav, but now we're dragging the GB cav through here. This unit gets to attack here, right? Localized positional advantage. Now, two cav get stuck in this square. Two more are going to get stuck in this square. So what Lamb has done is two units are pinning down four. Now as Cav goes in, forces two units to square, Cav continues the charge into the general. So then he's created a bit of advantage here, right? The two units in square are getting shot. Ottoman Cav come back and create some space here. General happens to die. It's pretty lucky. The same cav unit is still going, is going to hit in the back of the 88th here. GB units routing. Ottoman cav is having an effect in the GB line, while the GB cav is still kind of, well, mostly routing, but just flirting with this one line unit that's already routed one, one and a half of them. Same Ottoman line unit pulls back, still going. And now we have a bit of a route on our hands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All of a sudden, the GB player is down to eight units. And this happened extremely quickly, right? So the point I wanted to make is if you can create decisive little advantages like this in the early game, they can very rapidly snowball into the bigger part of the game which is what the square law is really getting at and in the end we're going to say wow you know about 10 minutes ago we were looking at a GB player stretched out like this and an Ottoman player you know here and we're like I'm not really sure how you're supposed to fight this and then where are we now we're a completely routed GB player and Lamb has got a dozen units left something like that so a good example of how creating a decisive position early in the game, right, as attrition continues to favor you, can really result in lopsided games. And more often than not, if you wind up with a lopsided game, that's probably what you experienced. If you watch your replay and you're like, wow, how did I beat that guy so bad? Something like this probably happened. If you play a grassy game where both players have two units at the end of it, you probably watch that and you say, well, nobody really did anything hugely advantageous at the beginning. And 
that's what you'd expect to see in that replay. So anyway, I, th I thought it was interesting how some general tenets of, I don't know what the right word is, military strategy is the wrong thing, but um, theoretically thinking about how armies interact with each other definitely applies to the video game and kind of informs us about game making decisions that we want to be thoughtful of when, how do I want to engage my opponent? Initially, you want to make some small advantages like that. And that's how you win the game, pretty much. Anyway, thank you for watching. Um, in other news, the Team League continues to develop. We're getting teams signed up. If you're interested in playing the Team League, uh, you can find information on that in the relevant discords. And that's it. So if you have any questions or whatever, by all means, leave a comment. I'll try to respond to them. Thank you for watching. Have a great weekend, and I'll see everybody in the next video.